Hey everyone, welcome to Talking Landscape Photography for tonight. Um, very, very glad to have you with us uh, as we talk about definitely one of my favourite areas. I think it's a favourite for a lot of photographers, uh, Cradle Mountain Lake St. Clair National Park. Um, and, you know, uh, Nick, how long have you been shooting in that area for? Oh, well, as long as I've been taking photos, I suppose, it's sort of draws you in, but you know, going through my more recent photos for tonight, I don't shoot up there as often as I probably should. Um, there's a, probably a few reasons for that. I like to sort of <laughs> get to all sorts of different places, but um, uh, the, the Cradle Mountain area is not something I've um, particularly concentrated myself on. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, ever since I started taking photos, it, it drew me in and it draws lots of people in. It's one of the most visited places um, in Tasmania uh, for tourists and that sort of thing up there with uh, Freysenay National Park and, and the Port, ha Port Arthur Historic Site. So it's one of the, the big, what do they call it, the big four? What's the other one? Strawn, I suppose. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, southwest, I suppose. That's a pretty big park. No, oh, big park, but uh, not a um, not a big touristy sort of area. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Port yeah. Arthur would be in there. Yeah, yeah. No, Port Arthur's definitely there. But uh, yeah, no, we uh, thought we'd do a show on on the area, and um, I think um, the way we're going to run it is we'll sort of talk about just around the Cradle Mountain um, area uh, to start with, and then um, we'll probably have a look at the the Overland Track, which um, Luke's um, done a few trips on, and um, we'll lead the way with with that. But um, yeah, looking forward to um, sort of showing you around the place for those that haven't been. I assume. Most that are watching have been been there, but uh, you might pick up a few extra tips and stuff along the way and uh, enjoy, I suppose. Yeah, what, have exactly. what, have you, what have you been up to, Luke? Uh, well, I just went out last night photographing the Aurora, actually. It's a um, bit of a, an exciting evening. Um, there was quite a big um, impact from a, I think it was a M M class flare that came in. So um, I decided to try my luck and did a little bit of planning. Um, I've been doing a few planning workshops lately and I thought I'd put a bit of my a proof. In, well, I don't know what, what the saying is. Um, my money where my mouth is perhaps. Um, yep. and, um, yeah, went out to, um, I decided after all the planning I did that, um, Coles Bay was going to be the place to go and um which is a three-hour drive from hobart so it was a nice little adventure dodging um all the wallabies and possums and everything else that likes to be on the on the road at that time of evening um don't recommend it but um you know when there's an aurora on you gotta gotta go for it when you can and so yeah thankfully there was a pretty clear evening um initially at least and then um i i knew that the clouds were going to end up coming through and it did about um just about quarter to 11 it started to really cloud over and i stayed around till midnight but um yeah, it was really um, just too thick to do too much with it after that. So, uh, but yeah, it was not a not an amazing show compared to some of the others, but it wasn't too bad at all. Certainly mm. got up over the the lower mountains um, of the Hazards Range, and um, if you follow me on socials, I've I've posted uh, a photo um, of of um, oh. that so far. Really? It's a bit of a quick edit. I've got probably some better better um, images to come actually, but. Um, yeah, it was was quite a quite an awesome little adventure. Oh, nice work. I um I didn't get out because um, I, I couldn't drive three hours, and uh, also um, I'm you might have noticed from my voice I'm actually a bit ill, and I have been for a few days, and I've had a few days off work, so I'm not a hundred percent. And if I start coughing, I'll try and mute my button, and uh, we'll go from there. But I'm I'm. I'm, not, I'm definitely not 100 percent at all. So uh, excuse excuse any uh, uh, nasty noises you hear from me. Uh, but yeah, it was it was too cloudy down down my way um, for aurora shooting, and um, yeah, like I said, I wasn't going anywhere anyway. But uh, yeah, well done on planning through, Luke. That's your uh, one of your big strengths, and yeah, you've done a couple of workshops lately doing planning. Yeah, I did a um, planning workshop. Um, I was on the Sony Scene website, um, that, that, and you might have seen a bit of promo that I did if you follow me on socials. Um, I really enjoy planning. I think it's probably because I'm actually a highly probably disorganised and late person a lot of the time, so I need to uh, make sure that I know what I'm doing um, so I turn up and, and do the right thing. But, I mean, there's definitely a huge... Um, 
uh, advantage in terms of planning and getting yourself in the right place at the right time. So um, keep an eye out for an advanced planning course that I'm running on Zoom a bit later in the month. Um, and I'll, I'll certainly be putting that out through socials. And so I've done a, a basic one was with the last one, which was sort of covering a whole bunch of concepts. And this one's really going into a lot of detail and, and um, a lot of the tools that, that are really, really kind of specific tools that can uh, help you really narrow down and, and get um, get yourself in the right place and, and really be sure about it, which is um, it's pretty amazing that we've got the tools and technology now to be able to do that. Um, and really quite reliably know what's going to happen. So there's no excuse, everyone. You should be nailing everything all the time. No, it's, always, it's always good just to go out anyway, but um, yeah, it certainly can help if you know what you're doing. So have you been out doing much shooting, Nick? Um, well, certainly not while I've been sick, but before I got sick, I um, uh, people might remember last week I wasn't around. I actually was on my way up to uh, the north of the state with my wife for a a getaway for a few nights, which was really, really pleasant. And uh, we had a, a great time, but um, she was actually playing golf, believe it or not. And <laughs> I, I'm not a golf person and she is. And so uh, I let her do her golf thing um, for two days in a row. And uh, while uh, she was doing that, I went off and uh, did some photography. So I, uh, yeah, I actually went to two totally new areas for me that I sort of just sort of scouted around on, on Google and thought, oh, that looks interesting. I wonder what might be there. And um, I was pleasantly surprised with both of them. And uh, I was really lucky with the forest area that I went to in the northeast that I got some um, some, some mist. It was very, very wet as well. I, I did get, <laughs> it was difficult to take photos, but I got some beautiful mist amongst um, some some silver wattles and myrtles. And uh, the, the wattles are a bit unique to me. Um, or, well, not unique to me, but they're, they're older, twisted sort of wattles that you don't see much of uh, unless you go scouting around. And I was very fortunate to come across some of those. So that uh, made me happy. Um, if you're on my Instagram, you'll we'll see a photo of those myrtle, uh, those wattles. Uh, there's a few shots yet to come. And uh, had a look at some sand dunes up that way as well, which was very, very interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah, I did see the one that you had with a little pool there or something from the recent rains, was it? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was really, really cool. There was, at the base of the sand dunes was, a, was um, pools of water that was fresh water and they were full of tadpoles. Um, oh. So, yeah, it was a really interesting area, um, actually, and um, I'll uh, go back there at some other time in different conditions and, and have a look at it. But, um, yeah, yeah, really, really good fun. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, well, that's, um, it's always good to get away. And um, yeah, hopefully um, those in um, at least New South Wales now can start to get out a little bit further as well. And, and I've seen a few people um, I follow on socials um, being able to get out for some shoots, which is um, really encouraging to see. So um, yeah, hopefully, um, you know, things are opening up um, sooner and sooner and we can be all back to normal within um, a few months, hopefully um yeah unfortunately i think there was a a, a a covid case come through tassie so um just just today so we don't know if we have we're in lockdown tomorrow or not or uh, what's going on so um so we'll have to wait and see on that one but it's yeah. it's part of our life these days so it might be tassie's turn next who knows so yeah yeah he, this bloke escaped from the quarantine hotel he came to tasmania without a what's called a good to go pass uh, he tried to get in a couple of times um, already without one and uh, he flew in uh, without a pass um, it was um, at night so he couldn't be flown back immediately he was put in a quarantine hotel and uh, then he escaped uh, from the quarantine hotel without people realizing until the next day and uh, when he was caught by the police he um, he was tested for COVID and today it was revealed that he was positive so uh, it might be um, an interesting uh, couple of days waiting to see what happens with that. But, uh, uh, certainly feel very happy for all those uh, in New South Wales that are coming out of um, their strict lockdown too. It's, it's great to see. And I've also been noticing a few uh, people up that way um, exercising their right to uh, take some photographs, which is really nice to see. And let's fingers crossed that it, um, it, things don't take off again. Uh, maybe the, the vaccinations will, will help a lot. And let's hope so. So. Yeah. absolutely absolutely it's um yeah, it's getting to the pointy end of all that I'm, I'm hoping that it's all open before christmas so that um people can see each other over christmas which would be pretty lovely if that that does happen to work out 
Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, um, why don't we get into um, the topic for tonight and um, what's what better way than um, getting the classic Nick Monk map um, out and, and going <laughs> through some, some details. Um, and um, often that's the easiest way to, to describe the lay of the land. Um, so Nick's going to start off and we're just going to really focus around um, Cradle Mountain itself. Um, and Nick will show the up you know, the location of Cradle and then what's actually around the immediate area, um, you know, Dove Lake and, and actually around the village itself. Obviously, that's just the beginning, but that's quite often the main part of what visitors actually see of Cradle Mountain, um, even though there's so much more to be seen. Um, obviously, obviously, you know, folks probably have one or two days at Cradle and that's all they get. So today we're going to be able to give you a bit more of an idea of what's what's behind the what's behind the lake and the mountain and, and um, see a bit more. So and then I'll take everyone through the overland track um, after that. So, yeah. Have you got my uh, screen with the map yep, up there? can see that. No worries. Very good. Very good. Um, so you're a fan of Nikon rumours, so um, I'm sure you're all across that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, well, the Nikon Z9 is uh, definitely on its way. Um, oh. a bit out of going to be a bit out of my price range, but it's a pretty exciting looking camera. So Yeah, is that more of a sports offering, kind of like the... Um, it's, that... it's an all-rounder, really. It's going to be 45 megapixels, uh, we, well, we believe, and... Uh, uh, it's going to do everything. It's the flagship camera. So it sounds like the A1, um, what Sony have, or the, was it the um, R3 that they just announced? Although I don't think that's high resolution, but. Uh, yeah. So the, yeah, R3 on the Canon, I think was what, 24 megapixels. So. Yeah. I think that's so, yet to release their kind of their top level one. That's full resolution, like a, you know, 50 megapixel one. from hmm. memory, so. Yeah. Well, of course it'll be better than the Sony A1, this Nikon Z9, but uh um, I'm sure Sony will come out with something um, nearly as good in the future, but um, it, it'll be very interesting to see. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, yes, I do have a few few things up there. Uh, right. So we'll start with the uh, overview here. So you've got it says Cradle Mountain Mark there, but it's actually the Cradle Mountain Hotel. So this road here is uh, where it says Middlesex is where you come into Cradle Mountain off the Belvoir Road and the Cradle Mountain Link Road. And if we zoom in a bit more, you can sort of see the lay of the land. You know, this is outside the National Park. It doesn't become National Park until you're uh, past the old visitor centre. Um, and then uh, you're inside the park itself. Uh, but it is conservation areas all around. So it's still uh, the rules uh, relating to uh, that sort of thing still apply. Uh, but the development um, is mainly all in this area. So if we zoom in a bit further, you can see that uh, there's a bit of accommodation in this area. And down the bottom here, I've got the, the new Cradle Mountain Visitor Centre, which is the gateway into Cradle. And uh, clearly the the car parks there and you can see they cater for a, it's quite a, a bit large. different to what it used to be if it, folks haven't been there for a, yeah. for a couple of years or so it's um changed quite dramatically actually yeah yeah they've really ramped it up for mass tourism and um it's probably one of the reasons why i don't spend as much time there as as i would like to spend there because it's such a beautiful area but it does get very busy um from a tasmanian perspective anyway it gets very very busy <laughs> Um, you know, it's not not Venice level or anything like that, but it's it's a very um, it, it loses its charm for me a little bit in the um, in the summer uh, because of there are so many visitors uh, and the way things work. We'll, we'll, we'll probably talk about that in a minute, but the way things work with the shuttle buses is a little bit um, a little bit different um, these days to what it used to be. If you haven't been for a while, um, but you can see here we've got the um, um, Cradle Mountain Wilderness Village and the Discovery Parks uh, Cradle Mountain Village, which is actually a really great place to stay. Uh, a couple of uh, Luke and my friends and a lot of photographers' friends, uh, Mark and Claire Walsh, um, um, uh, manage the Discovery Park at Cradle Mountain. Uh, and they're always very accommodating to photographers. So if you do stay in Cradle Mountain at Discovery Parks and you haven't met Mark and Claire, make sure you introduce yourself and let them know you're a photographer uh, because they will be very interested to know. Uh, lovely, Absolutely lovely Absolutely great people. Yeah. And there's also the Fagus Week event, which is probably worth mentioning as well. Yeah. We'll yeah. get into I'll... Fagus and what that's all about, but um, yeah, we... that's based as well. 
Yeah, we, we maybe mention that in in a short while. Um, yeah. There is an event. It's sort of a an unofficial official event, if you know what I mean. That <laughs> happens up there. It's not not a, um, not a, it's sort of a group of people that get together and, and have a good time based at the Discovery Parks Village. Um, and um, anyway, we'll talk about it a bit later when we talk about Fagus in particular. Uh, and anyway, we'll just sort of zoom down here a bit. So. Uh, for most people, you'll park your car at this visitor centre car park and then you'll catch shuttle buses from that point. Um, unless you're staying, so if you're visiting for the day or whatever, that's where you'll, you'll, you'll park and, and you'll get on a bus. Further down the road, um, where the speed limit is 40 kilometres an hour, <laughs> just so you know, uh, there are a lot of, lot of wildlife, a lot of wombats in the area and, and uh, it's very easy to speed down this road, so please... Um, a lot if of people to... pulled over to photograph the wombats too, creating traffic hazards and things. Yeah, yeah. It's a really, um, it's really, you have to be really mindful of the wildlife when you're at Cradle Mountain, anywhere in Tasmania really, but particularly in the sanctuary of the National Park at Cradle Mountain. It's um, it's not the greatest mix with all the cars and the um, and the wildlife, but um, if people travel at a sensible speed, then there aren't too many dramas. Uh, so you've got the Devils of Cradle here, which is a wildlife park um, that focuses mainly on Tasmanian devils. And if you're interested in seeing Tassie devils, it's one of a few places in Tasmania that you can visit. There's another one um, at um, Mile Creek called Trawana Wildlife Park. Yeah. And, and I, I was there recently, actually. Uh, it's the first time I've been in there. And, and it, you know, if you want to get some photos of devils, it's a great, probably one of the better places that I've been to, to be able to do that. And even like the the icon for Tourism Tasmania was um, photographed just off of the um, main observation uh, deck there. So, mm. um, you know, you can get some pretty cool shots if you always wanted to get a devil shot. Uh, otherwise, uh, I actually saw one last night driving back from um, uh, Tribunna, but oh, um, nice. yeah, there, there's, um, they're, they're quite elusive and very hard to photograph in the wild. Otherwise, we had Heath Holden on um, uh, quite a few episodes ago. So if you're interested to know the lengths you have to take to actually get a, a devil shot um, in the wild, then then you'll appreciate um, how hard it would be otherwise. So yeah, um, did you also um, go past um, the Wilderness Gallery as well, Nick? Ah, I did. So, sorry. Right before, before you get to the main visitor centre, you've got the Cradle Mountain Hotel, which is up here. Um, and the Cradle Mountain Hotel hosts um, what's called the Wilderness Gallery, and it's a it's it's usually used for um, uh, photographs, and it's used for other art as well uh, from time to time. But it's mainly used to display wilderness photography. Um, so it's a really great place to to visit, and they have a you know a, a rotation of artists um, during the um, during the year, etc., and they, I think they have a permanent collection of um, Peter Dombrovskis yep. images um, there as well. And they have a room with that plays the Wildness film as well. Yes, yes, the Wildness film. I think we've talked about that here on the show before, um, probably on the Dombrovskis special. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a great thing to visit, and it is. It's still free, I think, to get in, isn't it, Luke? Um, I. Th- uh, depending on how lucky you are, sometimes if you're staying at the um, the hotel, it's definitely free. But sometimes they have they do actually ask for a, um, to pay something, or if you buy something in the gift shop, then they sort of waive the fee. I think as well. Ah, um, so I don't know if it's free or not anymore. But it's even still, um, I always love going in there just to get a little bit of inspiration. Um, and I think the the main reason they put that that and it's probably what you reckon. I reckon it's one of the the best. Um, between that and maybe Wild Island is the in, in Salamanca the best um, uh, sort of landscape photography gallery in in Tasmania. Uh, well, there's oh, also yeah. David Murphy up up north in the Cow and Calf as well, of course. But um, yeah, so in in terms of that, um, yeah, it's, I think they actually built it so that you know Cradle doesn't always have the best weather, and so the idea is that if the weather's terrible, there's still somewhere people can go to see some beautiful landscapes and mm. and all sorts of things in there. So. Um, yeah, so you need to get your images in there one day, Nick. Oh, you have had an image or two in there in some joint exhibitions, haven't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I did. I some Tarkon images have been in there, but I haven't had a an exhibition in there. But um, I'm not not particularly fast, and I don't push for it. But um, yeah, if someone asks me, then I'll uh, I'll oblige. But uh, yeah, it's uh, certainly a place that's you know worth um, 
worth going into and, and having a, a look at um, whichever artists are exhibiting at the time. It's a, it's a great, a great uh, destination. So if we go back down past Devils at Cradle and uh, we have the other sort of large area, um, which is the Peppers Cradle Mountain Lodge, uh, which is the, probably the, the, the lodge that's, um, or the, the accommodation that's best known. Um, it's a, as it says, it's a large lodge, a, a hotel, uh, but it's also the place where the, the pub is, um, the bar and uh, there's a, uh, uh, you can get a, um, a, a good meal there. Uh, there's also a, um, a restaurant, a proper restaurant in there. I think it's the Highlander restaurant. Or, or oh, yeah, yep. Um, there's also a photograph there that um, more, more of a probably an Insta famous sort of photograph from the end of the um, the the dam pool there that that um, you look across back towards Peppers and it's, it's you know generally looks best in the snow, uh, but you'll, ah, you'll yep. see a few frames of that um, as well. So it's it's quite a photogenic spot in its own right, but obviously nothing like actually being in the park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it, it's a it's a lovely lodge and um, the accommodation is. Um, ranges from uh, mid-range to very expensive. There's no cheap stuff uh, at Peppers, but um, yeah, it's, um, they've got all it's these- not particularly cheap anywhere in Cradle really, is it these days? It's, it's really getting up in price there, so. Yeah, I, I think uh, yeah, certainly from, from my limited knowledge of accommodation, the Discovery Park's uh, probably the best value accommodation um, up there. Um, and certainly if you've got a family staying, then that's where I'd be recommending you stay. It really is a, a, a lovely um, area and it's surrounded, I'll just go back up to it. Um, so it's yeah, it's all this area here and it's surrounded by beautiful bush um, and all the cabins are sort of intertwined with bush and um, it, it's really, really very pleasant. So um, yeah, great place to stay with the family. Um, and is there another? No, I think that's all. All the lodge there. There's a few um, staff. There's some staff accommodation in scattered in various areas as well. If we go down a bit further, um, you've got the Cradle Mountain Interpretation Centre, which I call the the old the old old visitor centre. Um, before the least the second oldest, the one that's been demolished. Um, before that, uh, there was. I didn't um, realise that well, that's where it was. Oh, yeah. So yeah, before that visitor centre um, back down there, there was um, this interpretation centre, which was the main visitor centre. Is the old uh, the new the new area is the old airstrip, isn't it? So that they, they had a lot more land and space um, where the where the current um, uh, area is. You can see how it's an airstrip there. Um, yeah. And then yeah. the yeah, you can imagine that the interpretation centre as it is now would you know you only fit like you know a dozen or so cars in there, so it would have been yeah, way too small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it certainly outgrew it. But but having said that, it's it's definitely worthwhile calling into the interpretation centre and having a look. They've got some some really interesting displays in there, and including a really cool um, sort of three D display of the area which shows where the main walks are but it's like a like a diorama um really large one um and um they've got a selection of books and they usually have a film running in there as well um so i'd uh, definitely recommend you call in there and, and have a bit of a look um uh, the other thing the other main bit of infrastructure here that's worth knowing is the gate so this area here in front of the interpretation center is where vehicles are restricted from. So you can actually drive um, your own car into Peppers and that sort of area, uh, but you're restricted. You can't go past this bridge here, which is um, at the start of the Enchanted Walk, uh, unless you, you've got a certain reason to, and there are some, some exceptions to that, which we may mention, uh, but at the moment there's a boom gate in this area and uh, the buses are the only way through. So from this main area, um, it's a seven kilometre um, road trip. We follow through here, through beautiful button grass plains and, and into pencil pines through here, um, past the Dove River Canyon. And there's a, there's a walking track that runs all the way along here too, which I highly recommend if you... Um, you're up to it. It's a, a fantastic walking track on boardwalk and um, 
and raised bridges and stuff like that. It's really good. And then we get down here. Um, so we can see at the bottom for those that need uh, uh, recognise the Dove Lake car park. So that's the area that's right in front of Cradle Mountain. Um, and up here we have the Ronnie Creek car park um, and the Waldheim cabins. The Waldheim cabins are a rustic sort of area um, that um, historic um, historic Waldheim, ca Waldheim cabin is there and they have some other cabins there that you can book as accommodation. Um, they're a bit um, they're a bit uh, more rustic than, than other accommodation that's all self-contained and they're very 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 popular so if you want For to, good reason too oh uh, yeah if you want to stay at the Waldheim cabins, um, you need to book a long way ahead, particularly for busy times. Um, and I do recommend it. Um, it's as a photographer. Um, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, Nick. As a photographer, um, it's the it's a kind of a no brainer to stay there if you don't mind. Um, it, it's not. It's pretty basic facilities. I mean, you, you, it, they're sort of more dorm style. Uh, sort of rooms um it's got a full kitchenette and everything but the you know the there's a shared uh, amenities blocks um so it's not um luxury by any means but it's definitely all you need um if you're certainly if you're on a photographic mission it's perfect uh, but the great thing about it is because it's nestled actually inside the park itself um it means even if if the um road might be closed because of snow for other people but um, they still might let you in because that's where you're staying and you know you need to you need to sleep somewhere so um there's plenty of good reasons and i'm sure you'll just go into also about um, some of the walking tracks around Waldheim as well nick yeah we'll go back up to talk about the walking tracks and yep. just sort of overlaying it at the moment but oh, yeah. um, the um the other feature down here so that's on connell's avenue which comes off here but the other feature here is the ronnie creek car park which is um, a great place to stop um, park your car and then have a wander around uh, you can see there's a bunch of creeks that come into this area in the Dove River. Um, there's always wombats and stuff around this area. So um, it's a great place to stop and, and sort of get your, your longer lens out and, and follow them from a distance. Uh, but it's also the, the, the starting point of the overland track. So that's where uh, the bus stops, people get out with their packs and, and take off from that point. Uh, so if you need to know where it is, that's where it is. And if we follow the road a bit further down, it's another, what is it, another probably K or so? Oh, I'd say it's a good two, two to three Ks, yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably. About, uh, about a half an hour walk, something like that. Yeah, which you, you need to walk. actually know this at the moment um, because... Um, Oh, well, I'll, I'll go into the car arrangements and the bus arrangements in a second. But, but at the moment, um, this, this is the destination most people want to end up at, the Dove Lake car park. And you can see right now there is no car park there anymore. Um, it's been, been taken over by construction and they're constructing a Dove Lake business centre, which I won't get into the controversy of it too much, but... Um, it's meant to be. It's an observation shelter, not a visitor centre, though, isn't it? It's, it's uh, not actually going to have any sort of staff or anything as such. I think it's more about just having a mm. shelter that you can look at the view of everything from and not have to brave the elements, which um, I think being in a beautiful, pristine wilderness is what it's all about. But anywho. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you've put that, um, you've put that very um, very diplomatic, diplomatically, Luke, Yeah. Uh, I, um, yeah, I've, it, it's, yeah, anyway, <laughs> people will say, well, you know, it's replacing a car park and the car park was there and that was an eyesore, et cetera. Yes, okay, all, all those vacuous arguments from vacuous people. But, um, it, yeah, anyway, you'll be able to sit in there and not get cold fingers uh, while looking at the mountain that you probably won't be able to see because it'll be covered in cloud and rain like it normally is. Um, but, what do they say? Um, um, thirty days a year or something? I don't know how accurate that actually is. Th oh, it's a th three hundred days a year it rains. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, that sort of that sort of figure. Um, but you know, you do get to see it from time to time. <laughs> uh, and as we zoom out, of course, we have the absolutely magnificent Dove Lake um, and the surrounding lakes. Um, and so we've got um, Lake Lilla here. Lilla, Lilla, yeah. 
Wombat, Wombat Pool, Crater Lake, Lake Hanson, Lake Wilkes, and then, of course, Cradle Mountain itself. So the magnificent view that you get of the cradle in Cradle Mountain, the classic view um, is generally seen from the start of Dove Lake. Um, we might go back up to start what walks you can do uh, and then come back down to this area before we take off on the overland track. Um, and go back up to here. So the start of the walks, now there's, there's all sorts of grades of walk you can do at Cradle Mountain. There are there's walks that are suitable for um, people that have mobility issues and there are walks that are suitable for much more hardcore walkers or walkers that are used to walking on off um, boardwalks and more on sort of mud and rock and that sort of thing. So I'll try and um, say which ones they are as we go. But if you're not much of a walker, um, I guarantee you there's still some absolutely brilliant stuff to see at Cradle Mountain uh, with a little bit of walking. Um, it's just superb. So we'll start at Peppers here. And probably the easiest walk um, for the whole area is the Enchanted Walk, uh, which starts here at the bridge or at the back of the Peppers. And that basically is a, a boardwalk and, and hardened track walk um, that just goes around in a, a loop here and then back to the um, back to Peppers. And what you'll see there is um, uh, beautiful, uh, the Pencil Pine Creek uh, lined by pencil pines and um, lots of other Tasmanian natives. Uh, just a, a brilliant uh, little walk. In the, if it's snowing, that is that would be the definition of enchanted. It's just beautiful. Um, so if you're not into much walking, um, I highly recommend that and you'll, you'll find yourself stopping every few metres to take a photograph. It's a, it's a really beautiful area. Um, and if we go a bit further up here, so again, off the um, back of Pepper's Cradle Mountain, it's marked here as the Spieler track, which is actually a, a larger track, but this loop, where it's we've got the King Billy tree here. Um, that's called the King Billy walk. And there is some uphill and downhill on that walk, uh, but you'll see some of the most beautiful um, forests. Um, it's just a wonderful myrtles. And then King Billy, particularly King Billy's up in the top area here. Um, very, very large King Billy's. Um, they're just magnificent trees. Um, I guarantee your camera will come out every five seconds on this walk as well. It's just a, a magic place. And if you're lucky to get it with a heavy mist, um, it, it really is a fantastic area. And if you want a slightly longer walk or, or much longer walk, you can take the Spieler track, um, which sort of skirts around the edge of the forest. Um, but that's not up to the same track standard as the King Billy Walk, so just bear in mind you might need decent boots to walk around there, whereas the King Billy Walk is a um, almost entirely boardwalk um, with, with some steps and uphill, uh, but it's hardened. But, yeah, the Spieler track isn't. If we head over here, um, oh, right at the bridge here is a beautiful cascade. Uh, we might even be able to street view it. Yeah, so you got the. I'll just see if I can. Uh, no, it's not going to let me. Oh, there we go. It's better. So you've got this beautiful waterfall here on Pencil Pine Creek uh, with the, the pencil pines lining the side of it. And just uh, taking photographs from near this bridge here is, um, is a beautiful spot. Uh, so that's one waterfall. Let's zoom back out. We go over here to what's called the Dove Canyon track, but it won't say that on the sign. It's basically a, a walking track that uh, goes down to two waterfalls, uh, one of which is Pencil Pine Falls, uh, which is a beautiful waterfall. And again, this is on boardwalk uh, with some stairs. And if we go a bit further down the track, 
there's Nibet Falls, um, which is another beautiful waterfall. Uh, and this track, again, goes through the most magnificent forest. You'll uh, really enjoy it. Uh, it's really quite an enchanting sort of look through there. And on the other side, near the interpretation centre, is a, a really cool rainforest walk, um, which, again, goes through some beautiful forest as well as some sort of um, more open areas over in this section. But it's got a lookout um, onto Pencil Pine Falls, so you get a second a second sort of lookout from, from there, and that's definitely worth doing as well. So they're the, the sort of the easiest walks in the area, and they're all fantastic for photography. So um, if you've got a bit more of a, an adventurous spirit and some sturdy boots and a reasonable amount of fitness, then I would recommend doing the Dove River Canyon Circuit. So normally you'll get to Nibet Falls and you'll turn around and go back. Uh, but if you keep going um, along the track, uh, the track deteriorates into a um, not as well maintained track. And again, you'll need good boots for it. Uh, but uh, it's a great walk and it takes you through to, it follows along the Pizza Pine Creek to near where it meets the Dove River. And the Dove River um, flows through a canyon here, a very large canyon. This is, it's a bit hard to sort of, I don't know if the 3D will, oh yeah. So we'll do the 3D there. It doesn't really show just how steep it is, but it's a very narrow canyon that the river flows through. And you'll get some great views of the canyon along this walk. And it's also the area where Cradle Mountain Canyons do their canyoning tours, uh, or one of their areas where they do the canyoning tours. So if you're into canyoning, um, I definitely recommend uh, going on one of their tours. Uh, basically, you, you jump down waterfalls on, in with a wetsuit, etc., and swim down the Dove River. Um, crazy stuff. And you can see here where it, it really cuts in. Uh, but you do I really want to do that. I reckon it'll yeah. be so much fun. Yeah. yeah. Freezing uh, as, though. Be, yeah, crazy. I actually know the guy that manages that or owns that, um, Anthony O'Hearn. He's a great guy uh, and he runs a very good business. So it's definitely worth doing. Um, you've got very, very experienced guides. Um, and yeah, a fun, a fun day. Uh, but you do need a reasonable level of fitness, particularly as you climb out of the canyon area. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're only sort of so-so with your fitness, this is a long walk um, and yeah, it might not be for you. But that joins up with this boardwalk here, which is the boardwalk that goes all the way down to Dove Lake. Um, and or Ronnie Creek and Dove Lake. Um, but to finish the loop, it just goes back to the interpretation centre. Uh, so I might just bring up a couple of photos, Luke, and just sort of show yeah. some some from that sort of area. I've only got a few from that. I didn't have time to dig out everything. How do I... Uh, now I've got to work out how to do this. Uh, How do I, um, I don't know, here we go, new share. Right. Does that work? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so bring up this one here. So this is the sort of thing you'll see uh, of the creek in that um, uh, Nivet Falls and Pencil Pine um, falls uh, sort of thing on the way down towards the Dove Canyon. Uh, so you can see what a magnificent area it is and um, it's definitely worth seeing. Um, let me have a look. I did have some here. Uh, we're talking about the, the King Billy walk before with the beautiful myrtles and King Billies. Um, these are the sort of trees that you'll see. Um, just magnificent gnarled myrtles um, are really, and this is just literally off the track. I mean, you, you won't be able to go past these trees. Everyone photographs these trees, but um, you know, you, you'll see them and just be blown away by the way that they're, they're twisted and burled and just fantastic. And then uh, this one you guys might have seen before is one of my backgrounds um, in the, the same sort of area, um, not quite next to the track, but in the same sort of area. Um, just a, 
a magnificent sort of thing. So you're definitely not wasting your time going on the short walks. Um, don't think just because you're fit and healthy, you, you know, you should just track off all day on the big long walks because the short walks uh, are, you know, good bang for your buck as well. So definitely worthwhile. But um, I'll just go back to the map. I don't think I've got anything much here. We've got new share here. Right, so if we head down towards, um, where are we? That's myself. Down towards Ronnie Creek. So at Waldheim, well, I'm not quite north there, am I? Where is that? Uh, so Waldheim is on the edge of a forest called Weindorfer's Forest. Um, Gustav Weindorfer was one of the pioneers or was the pioneer in the area in the um, early 20th century. And he built Waldheim Lodge uh, and the forest is named after him. Uh, the forest behind him is named after him. And this forest um, has, there's a very short walk here called the Wein. Weindorfer's Forest Walk that I'm just sort of just goes around in a circle there. It's only 10 minutes or so, but it, it's um, it's a really, it's a hardened track and it's really worthwhile doing. Uh, some beautiful trees in there and um, you're getting into the fagus in this area. So you've got myrtles. Um, I think there's some King Billy in there, uh, but a lot of fagus trees as well. Um, and the Weindorfer's Forest is really an example um, where you get larger fagus trees and it tends to be one of the areas where the leaves stay on the longest or they ch change later and they tend to stay on the longest because it's a bit more sheltered than some of the areas where the leaves blow off. So, well, you know, the fagus, for those that, that aren't aware, is the um, Australia's only winter deciduous tree. And it's native and endemic to Tasmania, and it only grows in areas um, um, that are about. It ranges from about 600 metres above sea level, um, round about a little lower in, in one place, um, through to about 14, 1500 metres above sea level. But most of the area that you'll see fagus is in the sort of 800 to 1200 metre mark, uh, and a lot of it's around Cradle Mountain. It's a big feature. Come. Uh, April, uh, towards the end of April um, and into May. Uh, it draws a lot of people and a lot of photographers Very in. Very popular, yeah. With good reason. I've got plenty of photos of the Fagus to show a bit later. But I just wanted to point out that this forest um, is a great place to go if you're a bit later for the Fagus or um, there's been some terrible weather and the leaves have started blowing off up high. Um, this is a great place to, to see Fagus in a more sheltered environment. Um, and having said that, there's a great track here that's not for the faint-hearted. If you are not into mud and you're not into slippery tree roots, don't do it. Um, I thoroughly recommend full walking boots uh, that are waterproof or gum boots uh, for doing this track because it's it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, but the Hounslow Heath track uh, will take you through the best of the forest. Um, it's really worth doing. And yeah, I actually well. recommend gum boots um, if yeah. you've got them, um, because yeah. it's are very often waterlogged, and you're, yeah. you'll you'll be in water up to well past your ankles for sure. Yeah. Um, and um, and also you might have might say I mean it continues around as a loop, but really um if you you know you can sort of see there the the extent of the forest, and if you walk to the top and back, you've you've seen sort of most of the yeah. um that that beautiful Fagus forest through there. Yeah, yeah. So it changes as the elevate you gain elevation. It does go uphill, um, as you'll be able to see from here. It's you know there's an, an oh, there's an elevation gain. So Waldheim's down here, and you can see that yeah, it does go uphill uh, onto this ridge, which is Hounslow Heath. But we'll go back to the normal normal view. Uh, and I do have some shots from that area to show. Uh, and it does go in a loop. Once you get up the top, um, there's some beautiful fagus bushes sort of up, up the top here that sort of stand out on their own. Um, and they're really quite pretty uh, with a view over to Cradle Mountain. Um, 
you get a you can get a fair bit of snow up here as well. Uh, it's like I said, it's not a well maintained track, so you need to be you need to have your wits about you and definitely need good uh, uh, wet weather gear, etc. Uh, but the loop comes around, follows the ridge over to here, and then it loops down this ridge, and then it comes back through this valley here, um, which is called the Maryland's track. And this track is, again, extremely muddy, um, not maintained, uh, but if you're into particularly pandani plants, it's probably, um, you'll be in heaven. It's one of the best places to see huge pandanis. I think muddy is probably an understatement too through there, and apparently I've heard that it's really in bad shape at the moment as well. So um, I think they're even discouraging people from even going in there just based on how um, okay. how difficult the, the going actually is. Um, but, um, you know, if you're an intrepid photographer, um, it's not that you're not allowed to go in there. It's just um, trying to minimise the amount of uh, damage, but certainly um, not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Yeah, if you're sticking reasonably to the track, I don't think there's a lot more damage you could do. Um, but yes, it, it, look, the, the start of it just past Waldheim. So you've got Waldheim here. If you went along here and you got through to this sort of area in front of the trees, uh, you, you'll get a taste pretty quickly for what it's like underfoot. Um, it's pretty bad, um, but it's a beautiful area. Uh, you definitely got to watch out for snakes in the area if you're there, particularly in the summer months. Um, it would be snake heaven through there. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, really, really beautiful. Uh, but from Waldheim, you can start the track, not the Maryland track, but this track here, and it's all it's boardwalk again, and it'll take you down to this junction here, which is, a, you can see the overland track, and if we just zoom out, you'll see where those tracks go. So this track here will take you all the way up towards Crater Falls, um, which is a wonderful little forested area with a waterfall or several waterfalls through there and up through to Crater Lake, which is a really magnificent sort of lake. But I'll just um, do my screen thing and we'll have a look at some photos from the areas I've just talked about. Mm. Uh, so start with mm. yeah so in the um, you know the Weindorfers forest area you'll this is a fagus tree it's a huge fagus tree um, you'll see trees you know similar to this in size in the area uh, very, very old trees and um, a sight to behold. A lot of the fagus that you'll see generally round about is a lot different to this stuff that you see in the Weindorfers Forest. Um, so if you want to see big fagus trees, um, that's a place to see it. Um, you know, it's just awesome. And of course, you get the pandani in amongst the fagus. It's just a beautiful sight. Look out for my little friend, the pink robin, <laughs> around Waldheim. Uh, yeah, and this, again, you can see the huge tall pandanis and the fagus just goes shooting up to the, the sky. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great, great thing. Um, the Maryland's track is, um, I think this is my background, but you can see the, the pandanis there. They're very large pandanis. So if you're into that sort of thing and you want something a bit different from the area, then um, that's a good place. But having said that, um, there are lots of big, tall pandanis just out the front of Waldheim um, and yeah. on that on that track down to where it joins the overland track and goes to Crater um, crater Lake and Crater Falls, there's actually heaps of pandani there too. So you probably don't have to go on the Maryland track to see some great pandani. Um, all along Ronnie Creek there, which goes from um, 
here we are here. Oh, no, yeah, I'm hoping not the screen on. Um, I'll get back to it in a minute. But um, I'll, go, I'll go back to it now. Where does it say? Excuse me. So you can see here, if we look at, so this is Ronnie Creek car park here, and this is obviously Ronnie Creek, but you can see all these trees along the creek. You can see all the you know, little dots. They're all pandani or nearly all pandani. So you'll get to see heaps of them. And, and when you're here at this track junction, just down from Waldheim, um, you'll, you'll see them you know, in abundance. And even up here, just um, near Waldheim, again, there's heaps of pandemic there. So you don't have to go along that track and get yourself completely covered in mud. Um, I'll have some shots, actually, Nick, of that in the snow coming up. Ah, right. Yeah, great. And you can see they're just the pandemic just line. They just love lining the, the creeks. But then, you know, there's another group here. Um, they're everywhere. They, and they just look fantastic in all sorts of weather. Definitely worth worthwhile. Um, oh, I did have a shot of, did I have that here? Crater Lake. Oh, no. Yeah, it's, I'll bring it up. Um, yeah, so this is from Hounslow Heath. So these are the Fagus bushes. And you can see Crater Lake there in the, um, in the background. Uh, what a magnificent looking area it is. You can't even... You can't see the lake in there, but you can see the scale of the, the crater that's up there. And um, it, it really is a, a great sight. And, and the best view that you get of it, apart from in the air, um, um, from this sort of perspective is definitely up on Hounslow Heath. And you get these you know, great um, fagus trees up there as well. Uh, just go back to our map. Right, so let's get to the crux of things. Um, Love Lake. So the main walk that people are directed to um, or encouraged to um, do at Crater Mountain is the Dove Lake Circuit, um, which goes clearly around Dove Lake. So the track is quite clear. We've got the Dove Lake Boat Shed, which I've got a picture of. Um, I think everyone's got a picture of that. <laughs> uh, and um, a very look. I hate to use the word iconic, but it really probably is an iconic scene for Australian um, Australian photography. The Dove Lake boat shed with Prater Mountain in the background, um, and yes, basically it goes all the way around. It's a hardened track. It's not boardwalk um, all the way, but it is boardwalk part of the way. Uh, there's one small hill over on this side, on the western side, but it's not much. It's about two to two and a half hours, depending on how long you spend um, taking photographs. And there's some beautiful forest on the southwestern corner here um, called the Ballroom Forest. Um, and you'll see some beautiful trees along the, the track there. Actually, no, that's not the boring forest. I haven't gone far enough. My mistake. So this is the little hill here where you just go over. And the boring forest is down at the southern end here. A uh, little beach there. Just a fantastic spot. Uh, really beautiful trees through here. But the whole walk is magnificent. It's really worth doing. Um, you're encouraged to do it in a certain direction. I can't remember what direction it is. Um, so people aren't running into each other. Uh, very, very popular walk, but definitely worth doing. Pretty sure you walk to Glacier Rock first, um, so it'd be in a clockwise direction. Oh, yep. yep, so it's Glacier Rock. Um, Glacier Rock, I don't like that they call it Glacier Rock because it was called Suicide Rock. Um, I'm not one for changing names just because they don't sound very nice, um, but it was probably... <laughs> It's not very good for marketing, Nick. Come on. <laughs> hell. Sorry, look, I'm just having a bit of a joke with myself. Um, <laughs> it's a big, it's a bloody big rock. If there's anyone that appreciates dark humor, it would be you, I think. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, it's a bloody big rock. It's a nice look out and don't fall off it. Um, there's a fence there now anyway. I think a, 
like there always is of these things. Um, so yes, come this yeah, past glacier, glacier rock and through the circuit, it's it's great. So definitely recommend it. Um, there's a branch off here to the it's called the Lake Rodway track, and that'll take you to Lake Rodway, funnily enough, which is quite a long way away from this area. Um, but it'll start taking you uphill um, and over a mountain here called Hanson's Peak, which is not an easy walk. Um, if you're fit, it's got a chain, it's, hasn't it? So, easy. If, if you're fit, it's fine. If you're not fit, it's not fine. Um, it's, yeah, got a chain section that you've got to pull yourself up. And, and if the weather's bad and you're not really confident, then don't, don't do this track. Um, but it's on the way to a place called Twisted Lakes, um, where Luke will have a shot of Twisted Lakes, I'm certain. Um, it's Magic. a magnificent little collection of lakes that are surrounded by phagus, uh, extremely photogenic. Um, and if you do have the um, ability to get there, then uh, I definitely recommend it. I said, you, know, you probably only need a moderate level of fitness. I'm, I'm probably overstating it, but look, if you're not great on your feet, I'm just trying to be inclusive of everyone. If you're not great on your feet, then um, it's probably not great going over Hanson's Peak, but there is another option that's not quite as um, difficult, which is um, called the Twisted Lakes Track, and it goes past Lake Hanson. So it's like a lower level um, walk, and there's beautiful forest all through there as well. And that comes back up to Twisted Lakes. Um, so if you want to avoid going over that exposed section, you can. Um, both tracks are very photogenic and worthwhile, particularly at Vegas time, but any time. And I'll add to what Nick said too, in the sense that um, the you know one day, like if the conditions are beautiful, it can be an easy walk. If it's um, all iced up, it could be absolutely treacherous. So um, certainly the walk up over Hanson's Peak and out to tw tw Twisted Lakes can be very very icy. And so depending on the conditions, you might want to take ice uh, micro spikes. Um, I think it goes without saying any, hiking anywhere in the the um, alpine areas of of Tassie. Um, we probably haven't spoken about it yet, but um, and I'll co cover it a bit in the overland track section. But you know it's um can be very hostile very and you know quite a few people have lost their lives up there uh, because of exposure and that kind of thing so you, you do definitely want to be um on top of all of the you know the right equipment layering um that kind of thing yep um and you see it all the time at cradle people that are not dressed properly uh, particularly footwear um i've seen people in thongs uh, walking up um, on the plateau at marion's lookout which we'll talk about in a minute um, which is just plain wrong. Um, the weather can change at any moment, like Luke said. And um, even if it looks like a bright, beautiful day, um, unless you're right on top of what the weather forecast is doing, you might uh, find you've got a big storm that sneaks up on top of you. Um, Cradle Mountain itself is more than 1,500 metres high, um, and it's um, a very uh, tall and exposed mountain. Um, Dove Lake itself is at 900 metres uh, so you're talking an alpine area um, and, yeah, you just have to be really careful. Uh, this is a good good view, this 3D view. It shows you. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that there. It does a pretty you. good job these days. Yeah. So there's Waldheim down in the corner there just so we know which way we're facing. Um, but, um, yeah, Crater Lake there is just magnificent. So the other options that you have, we'll just go into we'll face south for now it's a little bit confusing for me um so the other options you have is you can go via lake lilla um and up to um well this is a dove lake lookout i'm not sure why it's called that but uh basically up towards marion's lookout here uh definitely worthwhile doing if you've got the, the fitness uphill um the section between uh, this Dove Lake Lookout and Marion's Lookout. I think that's the section. There's another chain section. So if we zoom in here, I think this area around this rock here, I might be wrong, um, but about there is there's another section of chains. Um, so um, just bear that in mind. Uh, this is part of the overland track. Um, once you get to uh, 
uh, near Crater Falls. Um, oh, well, depends which way you go. They've got market here. But if you come up towards, from Waldheim towards Crater Falls, you've got a junction and you can either just go up to Marion's Lookout from there or you can go to Crater Lake, um, which I definitely recommend. There's a boat shed at Crater Lake as well. And then it goes up and joins up there and then continue on up to Marion's Lookout, which is a magnificent place for photography, but a very high plateau. And this is where things start getting serious if you have snow. Um, if it's not already serious, lower down, but you can see snow a bit higher up, this is where you'll start getting issues with snow. Um, it's a mixture of um, boardwalk and, and um, uh, sort of gravel, um, but yeah, a bit undulating underfoot, but not too bad. But it is a it is a bit of a heart starter getting up to a Marion's lookout. You can see it's very steep. Uh, there is an it's alternate... a bit easier going the um, Crater Lake way than the the link track, isn't it? So. In terms yeah. of, um, it's, it's link tracks much more direct, but the the other way, the overland track it, itself is um you know a bit more of a gentle grade. Yeah, so there's I mean, there's, backpacks. Yeah. yeah, there's three there's three ways basically of getting up to Marins. You either go via Crater Lake and up, or via not Crater Lake <laughs> above Crater Lake, or yeah, then you've got this the the face track here. I'm not called face track, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't remember what it's called. But this one's really steep, and that's got chains as well. Track, yeah. That's the shortcut. That's the quickest way at Marion's Lookout from Dove Lake. Um, but it's also definitely the the one that will give you the, um, the the most puffed breath. But it's 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 still a great track anyway. Not recommended if you're not into bushwalking. Um, but, um, yeah, if you're in a hurry, then that's the way to go. Um And then, um, yes, if you let's go back to this view, I think. And then, if you continue along Marion's Lookout along the plateau here, you get great views over Dove Lake, you get great views towards Cradle Mountain. Um, it starts changing its perspective a bit. Um, it's quite bleak up here. Um, there is a lot of sensitive uh, vegetation up here, and it's not recommended that you wander around too much. Um, there's a lot of cushion plants. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, please um, be mindful of where you're putting your feet in that area. Uh, and it goes through to Kitchen Hut, which is another hut that's um, up there. It's an emergency shelter. You can't stay in it. Uh, but it's basically at the start of the track up Cradle Mountain itself to the summit, um, which is not an easy walk up to the summit. Again, um, you need to be prepared. Uh, you need to be fit um, to get up there. So just bear that in mind. Um, other tracks in the area, on the other side of Crater Lake, there's the horse track. Um, <coughs> sorry, just said the mute for a tick. Um, apologies for the coughing. You had a COVID test? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had one on Monday. So, but yeah, it's just got worse and worse. Um, yeah, so there's um, the horse track, which is probably not recommended um, unless you're looking for something different uh, because you've done the other tracks before. I'd definitely recommend the other tracks before the horse track. Um, it's not as well maintained, uh, easy to follow, but not as well maintained. And it joins up near Kitchen Hut. Um, the other track, the face, oh, sorry, here's the face track, it's, um, which goes across the face of Crater Mountain. Uh, again, a very undulating track, goes through some fantastic Fagus areas, um, really beautiful old twisted gnarled uh, Fagus you'll see through there. And that um, joins up to the twisted, near the Twisted Lakes track and the Lake Rodway track, which zoom out continues off down this side of Cradle Mountain which I think at the moment is where they're sending people to go on the overland track aren't they Luke to um, instead of the normal way they... uh, I think that oh, might might have um, they were, that was while they were doing the Waterfall Valley Hut but that's finished now so um, it's back to normal I'm pretty yeah. sure they, oh, was, yeah. they were putting people to Lake the first night was staying at Lake Rodway instead of Waterfall Valley I believe oh, yeah. while they were doing the hut yeah. yeah, so there's a hut here, um, Scott Kilbert Hut, named after a teacher and um, 
age uh, pupil on a trip in the um, uh, mid-century that uh, lost their lives on a, a school excursion from exposure. Uh, but the um, so there's a hut there. It's the alternate way. You can go around the other side of Cradle Mountain, basically. And I'll, I'll swing around so we're facing north again because it's really annoying me now. Um, so the eastern side of Cradle Mountain, it's an alternate way through to Waterfall Valley, which Luke will get into. Um, I'll show yep. a few more photos just before I hand over to Luke. Uh, share screen one. Oh. So, uh, yeah, classic Cradle Mountain sunrise shot. Um, yep, yeah, I've only ever bothered with it a couple of times. Um, Unfortunately, there's there's just um, all of these little photographer tracks there now. Um, I don't even know. I haven't been there for a while now. If they've roped it off or what what they've done, but there's there's all sorts of little um, yeah unofficial track trails leading to that spot. So. Well, hopefully they put a, a formal a proper lookout thing there i guess is probably the only way to solve that well yeah i mean photographers and other people have been going there for a long long time and it's mm. not getting any better um but there's no yeah enough <coughs> excuse me i'm sorry there's no official track to this spot but basically it's not hard to find you'll see soon see where it is uh, not far from in front of the car park um, the classic Beautiful. shot, um, I find this photo photograph absolutely boring, but that's because I'm a Tasmanian and <laughs> I've just seen that so many times, but it's one you have to have in your portfolio for when someone says, have you got a photo of the boat shed at Cradle Mountain? Yes, I do. It's a bit like the Ben Long tree, is it? Yeah, a bit like that. Um, it's a beautiful, um, hut made out of um, King Billy um, shingles uh, made by uh, Gustav Weindorfer and his uh, friends. And uh, yeah, a, a wonderful historic hut. I did have a... Probably going to have to speed through these, Nick, um, if we're going to yeah. be able to cover everything. Yeah, I got bored oh, one day. The weather was terrible and I lit up the inside of the um, shed was a, I'd never seen anyone do it before, and I think I started a bit of a trend because I've seen a lot since. But um, I'm sure I wasn't the first, but um, I hadn't seen anything before that. I was just bored, so that was <laughs> why I did that. Um, up Marion's Lookout, this is the sort of thing you'll see from near the track. Uh, cradle sort of dips behind a bit of a ridge. Look out towards Barn Bluff, which Luke will talk about in a minute. Um, it's um, the, the uh, Plateau Creek, um, which is up near Marion's Lookout, looking towards Cradle. You know, another one of, did I show that before? Um, down near the boat shed. Uh, I may as well show a few Fager shots while I'm here. Luke. Oh, absolutely. I'll just get, I'll just get them out some of the Some of these are award winning, aren't they? Uh, some of them are. It's very kind of you to point out. <laughs> um, some idiot that was up there at Cradle. Um, oh, oh, who's that? Wonder who Schnoz <laughs> that is. Oh, uh, with Brian Sharkey. Um, Fagus. I love that. Yeah, Cradle. Um, you had to do it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. It's a good shot of you, actually. Oh, yeah, I am sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Uh, These are up sort of more mm. on the um, Hanson's Peak sort of side. Mm. Um, the same one again. Beautiful. Just um, You can see how harsh the environment is to, for them to be having to grow like that. Yeah. Yep. And, and look, you know, as the crow flies, we're only a couple of kilometres from Weindorfer's Forest where they're growing into huge trees. Mm. So this is exactly the same species of plant that, grows into trees like that where it's sheltered. So um, higher up, you get the stunted, the stunted look. Um, and for a photographer, there's some uh, fantastic shapes and stuff to find. Um, it's worthwhile looking around and seeing what the roots are doing and, um, and getting some shots. 
So yeah, if you keep your eye out, you'll you'll see all, all sorts of things like that. Um, this is more on the eastern side of Cradle, yeah. looking at Little Horn. Yeah. That's a huge pencil pine. It's just a just a magnificent tree. I mean, just look at that. That is old as anything. That'd be a thousand years old. That tree, um, mm. just magnificent. Um, Fagus everywhere. Vegas bush. So, putting in putting on a show for you that day. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. It was just the changeable weather. Was again. that the same day as the other um like the other those Vegas ones there, or is it a different what those ones? Yeah. No, a different day. Okay. Same trip, different day. Um uh, we we'll might have to keep moving, Nick, or else um we'll be hit we'll be running over time. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. It's a pines, yeah. Um, yeah, well that'll that'll do me, I think. Yeah. Better bring you on. It's getting a bit monotone. <laughs> That's so, all right. I mean, uh, um, your images are just absolutely stunning. So I'm sure sharing. everyone appreciates you um, going through all of that. Right. I'm just going to um, share the screen now and um, just do a quick uh, overview of the Overland Track and then show some images uh, that I've taken along the Overland Track. Uh, and just give a bit of a, a flavour. Um, it's going to be very hard to um, go into a huge amount of detail with the amount of time that we have. Um, I mean, in theory, the Overland Track could be its own show, um, and we may well consider that depending on feedback. Um, I'm always almost worried we're not going to have enough time for Walls of Jerusalem as well. <laughs> There's so much to, to see in this area. Anyhow, this is um, obviously what Nick was bringing up a bit earlier. We've got... Um, um, we've got um, <laughs> Tough Lake, uh, uh, Crater Lake, Lake Lilla, Wombat Pool here. Um, so the Overland Track actually starts at Ronnie Creek, which is a car park basically in this area down. Oh, it's a bit more this way. Uh, and then you are following the, um, uh, this, this, I think that's it, Ronnie Creek itself or Crater Creek. And, um, and then going up this way isn't it that's the that's the track there um up through there up over the top oh this way sorry um and then going up over marion's peak and then we're going through this way past uh kitchen hut uh past the turn off to the cradle summit and then we keep continuing down Along here, along the side, that's Mount, I think it's Mount Emmett or Mount Emmett's just down through this way here. Whoops. Um, and then along through an area called Cradle Cirque, which I'll show a, a couple images of um, soon. And that, that's absolutely stunning uh, area, uh, Alpine Plateau here. And so what you've actually got is um, uh, this, this actually used to be a glacier sitting in here. That's what's actually grounded out. It's not really, the contours aren't, aren't showing up as, as um, spectacular as, as actually it is in, in real life. But um, you can see the cirque's basically the head of a, a, a glacier. And so you can, you've also got another cirque around here as well where, where the glacier sort of ground out the, um, the, the area. And then, so then we, we descend down into Waterfall Valley itself. And so this is the um, so now a new complex uh, or new hut there, which is, um, you know, all, all nice and fancy. And I believe they're gradually going to do up all of the huts along the overland track as they go. And I think um, Taz Walking Co, who, who run the private walk, will also be upgrading theirs. Very, both walks are absolutely fantastic. The one's a public walk, so you just have to book on, which the bookings are very, very uh, quick to go. It's like watching tickets selling for a concert or something like that. It, they go very quick, so you need to know when they're going to be opening up. And then you've also got um, this track here is taking you out to Barn Bluff Hut, which is actually um, the private uh, hut with that the Tasmania Walking Company have. So, um, so there are actually um, two different ways to do it. Um, I've done both ways twice, uh, and so I've got a bit of a unique view on that. Um, so, one option you can do as well is actually when you're staying at Waterfall Valley, um, which is the first place uh, where, where you stay on the first night, you can actually walk up here and then photograph from. Um, for um, what is it, um, Cradle Cirque area, 
Um, and there's a really, really amazing view looking back towards Barn Bluff. It's probably my, one of my favourite scenes in the world. Um, and so that's quite achievable from Waterfall Valley Hut, although, you know, it is a bit of a slog uphill to do that. So, um, so that's the first night. So or the first day, you're basically starting at Ronnie Creek um, uh, back here um, and then walking all the way along the top here and then down here and then down to Waterfall Valley. Um, so it's a reasonable, it's probably a lot of people think it's probably the hardest day. Your pack's the fullest because you've got all your food in there um, and you're walking uphill. Your legs aren't sort of used to all of that. So um, so that often, the, you know, people see that as one of the hardest days out of the way, the first day. Um, second day, uh, you're walking through Waterfall Valley and then across the plains here. Um, it's not, not as much of an interesting day today, I suppose. It's, um, there's not as many mountains. You're sort of walking more through moorland and it can be quite exposed. So if there's poor weather, you, you sort of um, bear the brunt of it, unfortunately. Um, you walk through here, there's a sidetrack here to a lake called Lake Will. And so you can go into Lake Will. There's a beautiful view across the lake towards Barn Bluff. Um, so that's that's definitely um, a side trip worth doing. Um, there's some beautiful pencil pines that sort of line the line the um, the edges here, and you can walk over to these beaches and things like that. So it is quite pretty. And then you continue on for a bit. Um, you can see we we're walking through here, and then we get down to Lake Windermere. So that that's the the second um, night's accommodation. Uh, and um, yeah, that, that's the lake itself. Um, there's quite a few um, beautiful uh, gum trees, gnarled trees as you sort of walk into um, this sort of area. So there are a few photos that you can take in this general vicinity um, and, you know, some options if you go down to the lake for sunrise and that kind of thing, if you, if you game. It's actually quite hard to wake up and go down for sunrise, especially if you, a lot of the time you're doing the overland trek in summer. So sunrise is actually very, very early and you're kind of, you know, pretty stuff from all of the hiking that you've done. So it's a good, good effort to actually get up for sunrise. Um, it's amazing how you can talk yourself out of doing something that you're really pumped about doing before you actually leave uh, when, when you feel a little bit different. So that's the first, um, the second night. Uh, then we're walking through again. It's, today's a bit more walking over plains. Um, uh, I think it's Pine Forest Moor is where you're walking. That's actually the um, private hut there, I believe. Pine Forest Moor hut. Um, and then we're walking through. Um, it's actually a really big day today, actually, because you're walking from uh, Windermere hut and you have to walk all the way to um new pelion hut isn't it so um quite a decent effort it's probably the longest day i think this this day um you actually get um all the way across and this is where the fourth river valley starts uh, and you actually go down frog flats and then come back up um i believe just up along this plateau here and then you come through to new pelion hut which is right here so that's quite a large day um, and so um, it's actually a bit shorter for the the public walk because they rather than stopping at Windermere Hut they actually go all the way to Pine Forest Moor Hut and then they walk from Pine Forest Moor Hut to to their hut which is actually not too far from um, New Pelion Hut I think that's their hut probably up in up there that's their hut there so um, this, this is by far the better hut in, in my opinion, just in terms of the view, it's one of the classic views of the overland track. If you've ever seen a beautiful veranda with the view across to Mount Oakley in the foreground, um, this is where that's taken and, um, absolutely, um, beautiful spot. Not one of my favorite places in Tassie for sure. You can actually get into New Pelion Hut, um, from the Arm River track. So you don't actually have to do the overland track to actually get there, but you do have to book it these days because of COVID. So you just have to bear that in mind. Um, I think it's COVID and also just they're trying to not have too many numbers at one time. I guess it's still COVID related, um, but that, absolutely gorgeous. There's a beautiful um, creek here as well. Um, and this, this moorland and marshland in, in front um, of, of, the, um, of the mountain gives a lot of photographic composition options as well, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, definitely um, when you get to New Pelion Hut, it's just a, an amazing thing. But some people actually choose to have a rest day there too. You can use it as a base to climb Mount Ossa from. We'll just get into that for, this, for the, what would that be, the third day. So you're walking 
Um, now it's going to, it's getting a bit harder to remember where the track goes. I should have had the layer um, that showed it, but I believe you just follow up. Um, you have to basically go up Pelion Gap. Um, I think that's the track there. You can just see, and it, it basically takes you up. Um, I guess you're going up here. There we go. That's the track there. So it's the, there's a bit of a crossroads here and you turn right here and you can go up Mount Ossa, which is the tallest mountain in Tasmania. And then you go left here and you're going up um, Mount Pelion East. Um, I guess one feature I didn't mention is Mount Pelion West, which is this big, big guy back here. It's one of, also one of the tallest mountains in Tassie, uh, as is um, Barn Bluff and Cradle Mountain. So we've got kind of all of the big monsters of Tassie in one um, particular area. Monsters are relative terms. <laughs> they're still quite small in, in a global scale, of course, but um, they're still amazing. So Pelion East Walk, um, I think it's quite boggy at the start, but absolutely amazing view I actually um camped up there one night um and for for new year's and watched the um clouds descending from the top of mount ossa um as my fireworks which is pretty awesome so um i've never actually summited ossa so never, weather's never been right uh, climb mount doris which is this first little lump here there's some beautiful um some folks call it japanese gardens which is sort of on this saddle here coming off the back of Mount Doris and um, beautiful um, sculpted scoparia plants and, and um, uh, cushion plants and things like that. So um, yeah, absolutely amazing walk if you can do it. Um, it's, it's hard because you, you know, you might be very tired, so it's hard to sort of motivate yourself to get up there. Uh, but um, it's definitely worth your while if you can. Um, and again, you, you don't have to do the whole overland track if you want to do that. I know folks that walk in from the Arm River track and, and go in that way to Summit Bossa as well. So this is still the third day. Uh, we're walking through here. Um, you can see the tracks a little bit more uh, obvious this time. Um, beautiful valley to walk down and you start getting this view of um, Cathedral Mountain, um, which is a, I think you've shot from the top of that, haven't you, Nick? Um, yep. That's a stunning spot. Um, and then- Got some pictures actually, I'll show you later if we have time. Yeah, um, we go down and I'm not quite sure. I believe that's probably Kia Aura there. Um, I don't know if that's the public one or the, or, um, the, the private one, but you've got Kia Aura Hut. And so basically that has this amazing view looking back towards Cathedral Mountain. Um, and um, I'll be able to show you some photos of that soon. Not quite sure what that is. That's Thetis or something like that. Um, I can't remember. Was, that's not still Ossa, is it? It's the back side. No, that's Ossa. I'm not there. sure where we're at. I can't remember what that one would be. Um, then, what was it? I'm a bit confused as to where we're actually looking at it at the moment. It's well, that's um. So we're we're basically got Cathedral Mountain, uh, Mount Ossa's uh, back here, which we've gone past, and then we're starting to get down towards the Duquesnes now. Oh, yeah, so we start at um, Falling Mountain and Mount Massey. Yeah, yeah, that's probably it. And then yeah. this um, the next day becomes a waterfall day. So along this um river, what's the Mersey River, isn't it? Um. It's got a whole bunch of waterfalls. Um, we've got Dalton Falls and you've also got Ferguson Falls and Hartnett Falls. So three, three amazing waterfalls on, on this particular day as you walk down um, this, this, um, this valley. Uh, and then you, I, I don't even know where it's going to be along here now, but um, there's um, the um, Burt Nichols it used to be called or Windy Ridge Hut. Um, and it's basically at the base of the um, Acropolis. Um, it's probably still quite a fair way through here. Um, it's a bit hard to tell because the mountains don't look like, look, um, they're not actually showing up the same as what you normally see them like. That's Lake St. Clair there. So um, it's not a massive day um, to go in, but I'm assuming that um, it would be in here somewhere, Windy Ridge Hut. Um, just can't quite make it out, but that's that's the, the last uh, main hut and then you're walking through um, and we end up coming to Lake St. Clair and is that Lake St. Clair that doesn't look like it there um, oh geez losing losing it what are you doing look I don't know um, that's cathedral there yeah it must be it down there it just doesn't look like it um, so uh, that's, that's it must be it there because that's um that'd be olympus oh geez i'm lost there <laughs> you have to go right oh, there. Yeah. i can't tell where you are yeah i know it's a bit hard with this um overlay oh well um then you end up at mount <laughs> like oh there's lake st clair there geez okay 
Oh, oh. look, there it is. Oh, that's that's I didn't think it looked like it. I'm getting seasick. Yeah, I know it's pretty bad, isn't it? You can see a cirque here. This is the Duquesne range here, so I'll show some photos of that as well. Um, so obviously the overland does a dog leg that I missed somewhere and, and we ended up in the wrong place, but uh -oh. yeah, I've done a terrible job explaining it. Um, uh, well, I got, I was all right at the start, but then you can't really see where the track goes and when it goes through the forest, but that's a good, good, um, good sort of summary anyway, because, you know, you start off in the moorlands and as you walk through the, 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 the um, the trip, you're basically going through, um, forest and it's absolutely gorgeous so um yeah there's plenty to see uh plenty to do so it goes winds all the way through like that um coming down so i will get to the photos now because i'm I've, I've done dismally with the map there <laughs> um so um the first day um we're starting off at waldheim um this is what it looks like uh in normal conditions and then in the snow um it can look very different um which one am i looking for here it's not Warhol, that one. um no i'm trying to find the um i thought i had it um wall time in the snow um oh this one here that's that's the snow oh. version of the last shot so um uh, not that one no that's that's some different hut so yeah, I'm not really jumping between the images like I was liking, but there, yeah, so you can see the difference there between the two. This is the bathhouse at um, Waldheim, so it's quite a nice little composition around the corner there. Um, some of the pandani that Nick was talking about that's along uh, the track that takes you down to up to um, past Crater Lake, and this is Crater Falls, which is a beautiful waterfall on the first day that you go past on the way up to um, the Marion's Lookout. That's the boat shed at Crater Lake. Um, when I did it, there was a bit of fagus. And also, as you can see, you had a little bit of snow, uh, all of the beautiful little fagus leaves sort of dropping down over the, over the track and then sort of getting up towards the top of Marion's Lookout with um, some fagus exposed and looking back towards Crater Lake and looking towards um, Cradle Mountain here with Dove Lake in the foreground. So you can sort of see that um, I, I sort of lucked out in terms of um, the, oh, Nick loves that term, um, oh, uh, the, the cloud over Cradle. But um, <laughs> what, what it actually did is it did actually clear up. So um, as, as we went through, it was pretty pretty cloudy here. And I quite like these compositions with the leading line of the boardwalk with um, the guide there in the distance. And then you can sort of see it started to clear and um, ended up um, being able to see it and got some really beautiful light on the side of the peak as well, which was really nice. So we didn't do this with snowshoes. Um, we did this all just with um, normal hiking boots. And I guess you can see here that the, the track's relatively exposed still, but um, you, you sometimes you need hiking uh, um, snowshoes and, and, and I'll show you a trip uh, that I needed that. Um, this is the first, this is the, Second time I did the overland track, I think. I've done it five times. Um, this is the um, kitchen hut. So um, you can sort of see the proximity to Cradle Mountain there. It's just a little short walk up the side there. Not, not really short, but it's, it's there. Um, I really love this view of the western side of Cradle Mountain. It's um, totally different to what you're used to seeing. Um, and you can get some amazing patterns, especially if you have a bit of snow around, um, reflections in the pools and, and that sort of thing and leading lines using the track. Beautiful pandani as well in the snow. Um, so, yeah, it's just a really stunning spot. And then you start getting out onto Cradle Cirque. Um, and um, just to give you an idea of what Cradle Cirque can look like, um, this is um, some shots taken on Cradle Cirque. So this is just looking from the track across to Barn Bluff. Um, and yeah, just um, you've probably seen some of those images that I've taken before. And, and, and yeah, it's just an incredible, incredible uh, place to, to, um, to, to photograph. Um, so on this particular uh, occasion, uh, from, from memory, Barn Bluff was actually completely clouded over. So I didn't even have any photos of Barn Bluff because there was nothing to photograph. And I remember that I'd always wanted to see Barn Bluff in snow. And unfortunately, um, I couldn't see it, even though it was coated in snow. There are some waterfalls in Waterfall Valley, but there's and there's you know still plenty of fagus around as well. 
um, and um, beautiful boardwalks um, with mossy banks and that kind of thing. Um, some creeks and, and rivers and, and things like that to photograph. Um, so there are patches of rainforest that you walk through. And then you've also got um, a lot of open moorland, which is um, full of um, button grass. Um, this is um, probably Pine Forest Moor here looking across to Mount Pelion West. Um, you can see here some exposed rock is the is the path. And, you know, depending on how much water you get, it can be waterlogged. So you, you can get nice wet feet walking through some of this sort of stuff. Uh, but generally the track condition is excellent. And it's really, I call it like a super highway, really. Um, the conditions of the track is, is really quite, quite impressive. Um, some yeah, beautiful like alpine pandani. This stuff's really exposed. It must just cop some brutal conditions to still be standing and, and going strong there. Mm. Um, Pelion East up west there, some of the alpine streams. And now we've got to uh, Mount Oakley, and this is at um, uh, at um, uh, New Pelion Hut. I actually don't have many more photos from New Pelion Hut, unfortunately, uh, but some of the beautiful creeks around there as well, um, plenty to photograph and, and, um, and, and look at around that area. Uh, oh, yeah, I do have a few more shots. This, this is literally just in front of the... Um, of the hut, um, the new Pelion hut. And um, that's looking the other way back towards Mount Pelion East as well. Mm. A few dramatic moody clouds going on this particular occasion. Yeah, and, and just beautiful Pandani and, and the figure of Mount Oakley. You can get some stunning light through there if, you, if you, you're lucky with the conditions. Um, then there's a few different waterfalls on the next walk before you get out to, this is, um, uh, the the, um, the private hut, which is the one at, what's that going to be called? Kia Ora Hut. Um, got a couple other shots of that coming up too. Uh, and then um, the walk through to Ducane Hut, which is um, well worth going inside. Um, there's, there's a beautiful old uh, wooden table in there, probably made out of pencil pine. Um, and um, a visitor's book that has all sorts of interesting things written in it. <laughs> um, and then, then you start going through the most incredible rainforest. So, um, so really a massive transition from having all of the, you know, um, open pine forest and uh, or open button grass forest and that kind of thing and, and just have these beautiful um, rainforests that you go through. It's just... Um, Absolutely stunning. And then um, some waterfalls. So that's um, it's actually cranking quite well. It's some um, Dalton Falls and then Ferguson Falls. It's actually quite difficult to photograph uh, because you're really right up next to it. And then um, Hartnett Falls as well, which is cranking. I've never seen it like that um, since. Um, you can even see the spray coming off the walls. I'm surprised I even got a frame without any um, water droplets on. I'm sure I um, had to fight pretty hard for that to happen. Um, that's a shot of the group that I was with. Um, a few few more walking shots, and and now we're getting to the back end of the track, um, heading towards um, uh, Narcissus River, and and that's that's, that's crossing Narcissus River on on the on a um, suspension bridge, and you get to the very end, and the Ida Clare comes and picks you up from the the jetty wharf, um, and then you basically jump on, and um, and and go back to the start. Um, now that's the that's the um, the summary version. Um, believe it or not, that was in May, um, so it still had had elements of snow. This was taken in November, so gives you an idea of how changeable the conditions can actually be. Um, so this is exactly the same walk going through exactly the same places. That's Pine Forest Moor Hut there. That's how much snow that we had in November. <laughs> um and yeah you can kind of see the 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 you know the the transition that's an idea of the uh, inside of the the um the private huts and and sort of how the how they kind of go about their business um it's all very nice um but yeah managed to get some beautiful snow shots this sort of section here just coated in snow was the definition of a winter wonderland uh, then we got to um Kia Ora hut and you know put the feet up and it was actually snowshoes that we're going around in um so that was um that was a fun shoot that one um but yeah beautiful um different details that you can pick up as you as you're walking along um and so yeah this a uh, totally and that's that's a view of um uh Duquesne hut there as well um towards the back end of the walk 
Um, and then this is probably one of the final scenes you have um, on the last day, walking out through the button grass plains, and then you've got the the view of um, Mount uh, Olympus in the distance. And so you know you're getting close to the um, the end of the walk, and the Ida Claire is going to come and pick you up from from the um, the ferry, which is this. It's just coming in there. That's the view actually on it. Um, and then when you get to the end um, at um, Cynthia Bay, you've got um, the, the sign there. So, I mean, it's a pretty quick, um, <laughs> I mean, I, we could definitely do a whole episode just on the Overland track, given how much of a new, how many nuances there are to it. Um, and there's plenty of material out there on, on it as well. But um, I think if you were to sum it up, it's an incredible experience, but um, it's not um, something I would recommend if you're doing it just as a photography journey. Um, because you're going to get, if you spent, um, say, five days shooting around Cradle Mountain versus doing the overland track, you'll probably get more from the five days around Cradle Mountain. Um, and that's not, uh, but that's not saying you shouldn't do the walk. It's just that um, the walk is more about an experience than it is necessarily about um, photography. And, and the reason I say that, I guess, is you've got those sort of days where you are just going through uh, planes and, and it's sort of, you know, you've got a lot of kind of um, same, same sort of views and that kind of thing. So, um, so there's, there can be quite a bit between, but you know, it's like anything, you, you make your own photos and you, you, um, you know, um, uh, you know, that, that's part of the challenge, I suppose. And every now and then I'll see a photo that someone's taken on the overland track and, and seen something in a different way than I have. So, and I really appreciate it, but um, yeah, it's certainly highly, highly recommend doing it. So don't let me take anything away from that. It's just more um, about, um, I think some people go in thinking that, you know, it's going to be photos galore, but um um, it's and, and you know it's it's hard work. And I always say you've got to work hard for it in Tasmania. It's not it's not just the photos don't just come to you along that experience. And my friend um, Dex, who we've had on earlier with the black and white episode, he he actually did the overland track over New Year's, and he didn't see a mountain the whole time. So you can get very unlucky with the weather too. You can get extremely lucky. Um, that's um, that's Tassie for you, uh, unfortunately. Um, and I'll just um, go through a few um, uh, aerial photos while I'm at it that sort of show the, the track from above. Um, that's, that was me doing a planning shot. Um, this is, um, well, that's, um, that's, that's the walls. Um, these are some shots that I, I took um, from the actual um, Cradle Mountain end of things. And you can sort of see how the, the similar features that, that, that there were to the... Um, the Google Maps images, that's the back end of Cradle with Lake Rodway uh, there. The Cradle looks completely different on the other side. Um, probably not a surprise, but um, you know, you wouldn't even recognize it really. Um, it's an example of some of the beautiful um, uh, pencil pines you can get around the, the um, tarns um, that are out on the, the highlands. And um, it's um, the road leading down to, to Cradle. I was very lucky to get some beautiful light at sunset there so you can sort of see how it was um coming off of the face of cradle here um looking back towards dove lake um yeah some just beautiful scenes with marion's lookout and, and the side of um cradle a lot of these probably haven't been shown before actually so um so just um thought i would bring them out and i mean it's sort of hard to choose sometimes with, with when you have conditions like this um which, which images you actually go with <laughs> Um, but um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a pretty amazing experience to be able to get a helicopter flight uh, over Cradle. So definitely, um, you know, if if you're there and it happens to be a bit of snow around or a big dump like this, it's definitely worth um, finding a helicopter um, service around. Cradle has um, a helicopter base there, so um, get in touch with those guys and and try and organise a flight because. Um, you know, you can get some pretty incredible stuff and it, it really does make, uh, make for some very unique views of, of, the, um, of the area. Um, and, then this, and then this is um, looking back more towards Cradle Cirque. Um, we've got Lake Will there with um, Pan Bluff and Cradle Mountain in the background. Uh, here we've got Lake Will there and you can see all this sort of line with the pencil pines here are really lighting up beautifully. 
uh, in the evening light. Um, that's probably one of my favourites um, from that particular area. Mm. Um, and then moving back, um, that's actually Mount uh, Pelion West, and you can really see how there used to be a glacier sitting in there. It's just mm. sort of eaten out by by the the forces there and it's actually a little bit of frenchman's cap just sitting up in the back there under the cloud so i was pretty lucky with the cloud actually that it's all over there and not over the area i was meant to be shooting another view of it from the side on you can see how that glacier would have been sitting in there um, and then you just the sculpted faces of all of these um this area just um absolutely astounding and you know all of those sort of um ground off by that's another big glacial cirque there um where where one would have been sitting in there um this is looking more at the duquesne range now which is towards the southern end of the overland track um you can actually go up into pine valley and, and up onto the the labyrinth area which takes you right up onto um the duquesne range it's at mount jerry in there then looking around to the acropolis so it's and and you can really see how the, the it's been formed by the glacial action another one there so um, mount jerry is probably my favorite mountain in tassie it's very very um beautiful peak um this is a nice shot of it here just showing the the you know it doesn't really look like tassie in some ways or what you're used to seeing in tassie it doesn't look like many places really it's quite a quite a uh, foreboding site another big glacial cirque there that's actually pine valley there with the the labyrinth um up in that sort of area there um yeah, absolutely um, stunning spot. And then, then we're right down the end and looking at Mount Olympus. Um, and we've got you know, um, a few different views around there of the, the different peaks um, that, that um, yeah, just, just seem to go on for ages and ages and ages. Uh, yeah, so definitely um, very, very special um, flight that I was able to do, but it, and it gives a really good topographical summary of the overland track in that general area as well. And certainly probably my favorite image is probably related to um, getting, getting some yeah, beautiful light over, um, over Crater Lake and, and the, you know, just using that as a, a foreground leading into um, Cradle Mountain. You actually see a little bit of, um, Pelly and West there just behind as well. And then all of the other mountains along the overland track sort of laid out behind. Yeah. So um, that's, um, that's, I think that's most of what I was going to go through. Um, there's just a couple more that I was going to show around the cradle area. And that was um, in the snow around um, uh, uh, Waldheim area. And so this is the sort of stuff that's only within probably half an hour's walk. Oh, at, at the most from um that we if you stay at waldheim that's the mount kate hut um which um you know was snowing most of the time i was shooting it but that gives it a, its own sort of feel um and then yeah just um there's, there's a lot of little detail sort of shots that you can make these are all unedited actually so i've just sort of pulled them out just for examples but um yeah, a lot of um, pretty cool scenes. That's Waldheim itself, absolutely caked in snow. Um, so that's the sort of, there's a car park just here and all of the accommodations around the back of this. And that's the main um, the main sort of, um, how, where, I guess, where the, the guest house was. And then you can walk around the side here and that's where that bath house was that I, I was showing a bit earlier, which is this one here uh, as well. Uh, and then we I did actually get out to, cradle itself but it wasn't really showing itself very well um, but you can sort of get an idea of um, the conditions and so that with this particular shoot we um, went in for, for sunrise and then they closed the park behind us um, so we actually were in the park uh, pretty much had it all to ourselves the whole day with it all coated in snow so very fortunate um, also can track down a few uh, wombats and and have a bit of a play with those guys as well they're always quite friendly excuse me friendly so um yeah so that's, we might um we might just mention the access because we skipped over it and i know yeah. some, some people yeah, have you asked to bring in the, a map in the, back up or something like that or the chat oh i, I won't bring the map up, yeah. up as such but the, the the car issue is basically the um the park is closed to private vehicles from i think it's 8 a.m um, you're allowed to drive in before that. So if you want to drive in for sunrise, you're allowed to do that. Uh, the boom gate will open when you get to it. Um, but 
when you come back out, um, when the, 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 the buses are running, you actually have to follow out behind one of the buses. And the reason is that the buses are quite large and the um, road is very narrow. Um, so basically the buses have to talk to each other as to where they are on the road and they actually mm. stop in layovers to wait for the other bus to come by. So you have to follow out a bus. If you go there for sunrise in your own car, you must follow a bus out. Um, it's mandatory. Um, and pull over when they pull over uh, because they, they're in radio contact with the other buses. Um, after 8 a.m., there is no private vehicle access unless you are staying at Waldheim. If you're staying at Waldheim, um, you're given instructions as to what to do, and basically you have to wait for a bus at the other end and then follow the bus in. Um, if you want to do sunset in the area or anything like that, um, the buses finish at a certain time, about mm. 5 o'clock, or in daylight savings, it might be slightly later. Uh, but you have to bear in mind that there won't be any buses after that time. So you have to be really organised. If you want to do a big, long walk and come out after the buses, you're going to have to either walk out the seven or eight kilometres back to um, uh, where the, um, the visitors' information centre is, or you have to be organised enough to put a car in before the the park opens. You want to do something, set your bed around. Yeah. yeah, you want to... Probably I'm um, driving to Runny Creek and park there before the buses start running. So oh, you've that's got to do true, it yeah. in the early part of the day. Um, otherwise, you can get stuck. And I know of people that have been stuck and have had to walk out all the way. Wow. Um, also, the at the moment because of the construction of the observation shelter at the old Dove Lake car park, um, there's no vehicle access past Ronnie Creek. So if you want to do a sunrise at Dove Lake and you want to drive your own car in, you have to park at Ronnie Creek and then walk the rest of the way or bring a, a bicycle or something like that. Um, it's And I, I can't see that changing. I think once the observation shelter is built, there won't be any car access past Ronnie Creek for private vehicles at all. Um, I'm not sure that that's the case, but I suspect it will be. Um, and it's a bit of a schmozzle in that, in, and that's basically the park becoming too popular and the having to make compromises um, with private vehicle access. Mm. Uh, whereas if you if you visited Cradle Mountain five years ago, um, you could have just driven straight to the the Dove Lake car park right in front of the the view of the mountain and done your sunrise shot, left your car there, um, gone for a walk, and come out in and out whenever you liked, but that just doesn't happen anymore. Um, it's a it's a real pity for photographers, um, but it's a victim of its own popularity, um, of which photographers are a part of, of course. Um, I think there was a question also regarding... Yeah, just, to, uh, just to before you go on there, there was 2.2 Ks. Um, so if you want to do sunrise, you basically have to walk into... Um, walk in from Ronnie Creek. You can't park or, or even be dropped off down here. So you have to walk, you have to park at Ronnie Creek and either walk, it was 2.2 Ks from Ronnie Creek to the, the classic view of um, Cradle and Dove Lake. Um, and that's 2.6 Ks to go via the Lake Lilla track. Um, parks will, will say to go via the Lake Lilla track. They don't want people walking on the main road. Um, so you can see at about 2.6 Ks. So that's a, Unfortunately, it's uh, maybe operators can drop people off there, but um, for for private people visiting, um, the only option to do sunrise there is unfortunately to walk at least two kilometres into yeah. into the viewing area, and then sunset, like Nick was saying, is a, a real challenge. And that's one good reason to stay at Waldheim because then you can actually that's only a two point five k walk from there to sunset and then back again, um, and then you're staying there anyway. Mm. And you're allowed in and out of the park if you're actually staying at Waldheim. So you still have to follow buses in and out, but um, it's definitely a more flexible option there. So, um, yeah, so that's something to, to bear in mind. Um, unfortunately, yes, Cradle is, is now nowhere near as easy for photographers and it's a real worry going forward. Um, I mean, it, it's essentially going to be like that permanently, I, I believe, now. So, um, so that's just, um, it, it's really, yeah, really do need to, 
think a lot more about it. it's not a simple matter of used to be able to just yeah drive in park at the car park do whatever you want drive out whenever you want um it, it's um yeah no longer like that yeah yeah and um oh, what was i gonna say um oh, there was another question uh about the end of the overland track um is there any um um uh, is there any uh shuttle or anything like that there are yeah private, so there are private mean, operators um, yeah, there's, but- there's operators that will um take you so there's a lot of the, people do it two different ways but i think it makes more sense to leave your car at lake st Clair, or and there's quite a big car park at St, um at cynthia bay there at the the, the southern end of lake st Clair. i'm going to have to do a terrible job finding it again no, um, that's like st Clair there and then you've got cynthia bay here and so that's it uh, that's pump house point there that's that's the big car park here that's the jetty that the 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 ferry goes to and, and so you park your car there get someone to pick you up at the end of the walk and then they will drive you all the way i think they normally go the western way they'll drive you all the way around here and then come back in and um take you to the start of the walk at ronnie creek and that way when you finish when you finish the um the walk then your car's there ready to go mm. and so that makes a lot of sense you can do it the other way leave your car at ronnie creek and then come back just depends i guess which way you're wanting to plan your trip around mm. um it's always a, a lot easier nicer to end up in your own car at the end rather than having to go on a stinky bus so mm. um yeah so that's that's and i've done that myself um and it you know it makes it quite easy to to do it that way um uh, otherwise you can do a shuffle with with two if you've got two cars um you can both drive to the end um leave the car there and then drive back to the um drive to the start uh it's probably not much point though doing it that way mm. so um yeah so that's that's the area um we unfortunately aren't going to have time are we nick to even no. talk about the walls no. um, unfortunately um because there's some so many um amazing um photos to show from there so sorry for um uh, mentioning that in the in the show notes when we're not going to be able to get to that but i probably should have known better given how how much there is to do in the cradle area and and really um i sped through so quickly on on five days of most amazing scenery um with the overland track um yeah so it's definitely um something that that we'll have to revisit at some point um yeah um i don't know if there's any other questions i'll just check on youtube uh, i think people are just saying um um some general comments about things like that so um what do you have anything sort of um to add um one quote for the shuttle is four hundred and fifty dollars. Um, Rosie was saying on on the, right. on the chat. I don't know if that's. It could be. Um, normally they like to split it with um, a whole bunch of people, so it probably does make sense because it's a good three to four hour drive. So, um, so you know, if one hundred dollars an hour, um, mm. you know, plus fuel and all of that. Um, if they're only just taking you, then that's probably not unreasonable, actually. Um, uh, but if it, the idea is you you book a service that that is shuff, shuttling a whole bunch of other walkers at the same time, and so that'll that'll divvy up the cost. So um, it's better to ask them when um, you know when they're when they're going to be shuttling a whole bunch of people. It's the same with the ferry actually as well. If you if you if you try if you book the ferry to take you back from Narcissus um, sort of hut area back to lake st Clair, and there's not enough people you have to pay for the whole ferry as well so um it's just one of the you know you can't expect people to drive from lake st Clair to cradle mountain for 50 dollars um if you're the only person in the car or anything like that so um yeah. so normally i think you could probably get away with under a hundred dollars if if you actually um are sharing it um maybe even less so yeah, um, yeah. look there are a few monetary things with this walk it cost you well, i think what is it 220 dollars to book the walk i think um, it's actually more than that now i think it's more like 300 dollars oh, oh, what a walk. surprise yeah um it's another another reason why <laughs> it um annoys me it is free to do um in winter as well between mid mid um, may and and i think early october i believe um so 
um, that, that's also worth considering if you don't mind um, think the cold. It can be actually beautiful in winter, actually, if you pick the right weather. If well, you, Sometimes you, you, you can't pick it, really. If, well, in, no, if you can go any time in winter, you can pick the weather um, because it's free. But um, you, you don't have much chance if you've booked it. Um, you, what the weather is, is what the weather you get. Mm. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, that's, that's definitely a good point to raise. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably the, one of the reasons the whole setup now is probably one of the reasons why I don't spend as much time there as I'd, I'd like because it's it's difficult, it costs money. Um, it's um, for, for a local, uh, it's a bit of a different story if you're a tourist, I suppose. And yeah, well, I think um, trip, there's a lot of value if you can get it, if you can get Waldheim, uh, a, a nice place there, just yeah. um, stay there for a few days, enjoy the area um I, I, you know it's going to be a simple sort of trip you can still probably head head back to the tavern for a nice meal every now and then uh, yeah. from waldheim and um i think you'd be pretty happy um there so that that's that's my tip for sure and then don't yeah. forget to visit the wilderness gallery as well and, and get inspired by the awesome photos there yeah. um i think that makes for a pretty good trip um but yeah it's 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 um for people that are used to how it used to be it's it is a bit um bit yep. of a downer these days but um I, I was only there a few a couple months ago and in i was there at fagus time and i was there in winter and um it was just absolutely glorious so yeah. never it loses its shine i'll just i'll just mention just before we go because we touched on it right at the start um that um the discovery cradle parks um hosted by um uh, Mark and Claire Walsh um, do have a an informal gathering that happens every year called Focus on the Fagus. There is a Facebook group for that um, if you're interested in having a look. But basically, it's a it's a bunch of photographers. Many of them are regular visitors that visit every year, um, and then they, there are people like uh, uh, Luke and I that you know will go for a year and then have a couple of years off or or whatever. Uh, but it's a wonderful, wonderful bunch of people, and it's. It's a social event um, and there's a couple of informal walks that are organised, some are with the more hardcore walkers, some are with the, um, the walkers that, that aren't quite up for the longer walks, uh, but the, the focus is on the focus. So it's, it's always um, around the end of April into the start of May that the week is planned for. And there's a bunch Yeah, just for a reference point, the, they often talk about Anzac Day as being the peak of Fagus or at least a good good sort of mental note of when to think about Fagus being in cradle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, it, it's, um, yeah, if you if you are interested in perhaps um, doing that and staying at Discovery Cradle Parks, um, it's, it's um, a limited amount of people, of course, but um, uh, definitely get in touch with Mark and Claire if you're a photographer and interested in it. Um, it is a a great bunch of people. Um, some of the best people I know um, go there um, each year or every second or third year, and um, it's a it's a great time. And you know, the social aspect of it is just as good as the um, the photography. Yeah, and the it's hospitality. quite a community, really. Um, yeah. but they're always very welcoming to like minded folks. So um, uh, yeah, and they definitely it's definitely a good organised way to get out into the park and and see some areas that you probably wouldn't get to otherwise because. Uh, of the challenges to to get to some of the places, so yeah. Um, yeah, so that's definitely worth looking into. Um, yeah, so and if um, anyone's ever looking to go to Cradle, I'm also happy to do a private tour of um, that sort of area and take you know go and do some photos and that sort of thing. I am licensed to go to certain areas of Cradle Mountain as well, so that that would be um, no problem at all. Um, cool. Well, I'll probably need to leave it there for tonight and we're going to have to look at doing another episode, maybe part two of, um, and so we can look at the walls of Jerusalem and some of those other areas and, um, uh, at another time. Uh, and, um, if there's any sort of feedback on tonight's episode or anything like that, or things you felt like we missed or went over too quickly, uh, please let us know because um, that helps us plan our episodes going forward. Now, next week we have Peter Hill on and we're going to look into infrared. Um, so um, I'm really, really excited about that. I'm actually a huge fan of infrared. Uh, and Peter will take us through um, his journey in infrared um, and all everything you really need to do in terms of setting up your camera uh, for um, you know, getting into that. Um, it's mainly looking more into converted cameras than using filters, but I'm sure we'll touch on what it's like using filters as well. Converted cameras is obviously the better way of going about things. Um, Peter, if you haven't seen his work, 
please check it out um, and it will give you a good flavour of what to expect uh, in the episode. So, yeah, we've had that in planning for a while, so we were looking forward to um, welcoming Peter onto the show uh, for next week. Um, cool. Well, um, I think that's all for tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Nick. Hope you feel better soon. Yeah, so do I. Um, I'm not sure if Paul's going to join us um, next week or not. He's gallivanting in on a yacht somewhere in, in the Whitsundays or something like that. I, I don't know how he manages to do these things. So, uh, But um, in any case, we'll certainly be there and um, looking forward to seeing you all then. All right. Um, until then, have a great time. Happy shooting. And um, we'll see you soon. All right. See, see you, everyone. Bye. Bye.